Hello everyone! Welcome back to Miami! My name is Pazu and this is a golden way. Alright, we are going to the sales office. So West Flagler Street. And oh and there it is, sales office here on the right. Hmm, and it's stocks and bonds office. Uh, it appears to be a stocks and bonds office. You briefly remember all the hubbub of war bonds a few years ago and find yourself glad all that is over. Yeah, this is set in the 1920s. So, after World War One, The billboard reads Coral Gables, Miami's master suburb. See, you will see Miami at its best. Uh... The sales office, the wall of the building is rough, like a pumice stone. You find yourself quite intrigued by this material. Oh, really intrigued by building material. Alright, let's head into the sales office. Uh, the Coral Gable sales office has established itself in this building. It appears to be constructed from some kind of porous stone. One you are unfamiliar with. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I so interested in building materials all of a sudden? <laughs> and here we are, sales office. Hmm, couple of gentlemen here. A couple of men are seated here waiting their turn for the chance to speak with Mr. Merrick. You wonder what it's going to take to be in the shoes. Why would I want to be in the shoes? No, no thank you. <laughs> Uh, you better not speak to them. They are currently the competition, after all. Yeah, that is right. Hmm, secretary here. She looks tired and hassled as she busily jots down information on a piece of paper. You can't say you envy her job. Pardon me, miss. I'm terribly sorry, sir, but I'm just too busy for you right now. Perhaps you could come back another time? Another time? I've just come all the way from New York. Surely there's something a lovely young lady like you can do to help out a man in need? Look, Buster, I've heard it all before. Like I said, I haven't got time for you at this moment. What seems to be the trouble? Well, not that you'd care, but I need to get these letters written. And seeing as the weekly shipment of supplies has been delayed, I'm forced to do them by hand. You seem very dedicated to your job. I can appreciate that. I am, yes. Mainly because I want to keep it. Now, unless you want to come back here and pick up a pen, I really need to get back to my work. A tempting offer, but I'll have to decline. I'll be back late. Hmm, and you know what? I see a typewriter here on the desk. Standard typewriter takes up the right side of the secretary's desk. Uh, she might protest if you hand her a typewriter. <laughs> uh, you know what? The typewriter ribbon that I have. Yeah, you can never have too many extra typewriter ribbons. Brought this all the way from New York. I think I need to give this to the secretary. Pardon me, miss. Would this typewriter ribbon be of any use to you? It certainly would. Mine wore out yesterday, and I ordered a replacement, but it hasn't come in yet. Thank you, sir. I greatly appreciate it. This will cut my work time by half, at least. My pleasure. Happy to help. And... And that is it. Can I go in and see Mr. Merrick? Pardon me, miss. What may I do for you, sir? Uh, I help you with the typewriter, so... How about meeting with Merrick? I'd like to see Mr. George Merrick. Take a number. Mr. Merrick is in very high demand. I'm afraid he's not currently seeing walk-ins. Oh, come on. She knows no gratitude. Would it be possible to make an appointment to see Mr. Merrick? Certainly. Let me see. Our next available appointment is... next February. Whoa. What? <laughs> That's preposterous. Yes. Mr. Merrick is a very busy man. I think you've made that quite clear. Come now. I helped you out with your typewriter. Yes. Now you're just gonna hi-hat me? I don't know how things work down here, but where I'm from, one good turn usually deserves another. Okay, okay. Keep your shirt on. I'll level with you. I'm not going to be able to get you an appointment. But I can tell you that Mr. Merrick keeps an eye out for fresh talent. If you can manage to do something to impress him, he may see you without an appointment. I see. What would you suggest? Well, I'm not sure. But you might be able to get something done at today's land auction. Land auction? And where is that? A land auction, you say? Where and when? 
It's set to start this afternoon, around two o'clock. You'll find it at the corner of Granada Avenue and Coral Way. Fantastic. I'll head over there right away. Good luck. And about this Coral Gables, this project... Have you got any pertinent information on the Coral Gables development? None I'm allowed to divulge, sir. I'll let you get back to your work. Thank you, sir. So is that land auction related to that? This Coral Gables project? Uh, painting. The painting shows a nice-looking stone archway. The plaque underneath identifies it as a soon-to-be-constructed Alhambra entrance. And this one shows a large building which appears to house shops. There's no plaque identifying it, but it must be a proposed structure which has not yet been built. <laughs> so they're all proposals. Doors frosted glass pane reads George D. Merrick, Director of Planning. Can I barge in? No. <laughs> Can barge in uninvited. Alright. What else is here? Filing cabinet. Hmm. Contains a wide array of drawers. This is presumably where most, if not all, of the records of the budding Coral Gables development are being kept. Hmm. What kind of secrets are inside? Alright, we are heading to the land auction. Do we know the directions? Oh, it's right here. The site of the land auction. Ooh. And sold! You've made a choice you won't regret, sir. A pretty large crowd. You scan the faces of the crowd and see a mixture of excitement and indecisiveness. Hmm. Do I hear any bids for the Madrid lots? You'd be a fool to let those slip away. And uh, you know what? That's the voice. Sounds kind of familiar. Oh, Dog Damus, yes! Come on, folks, it's a beautiful day to buy some land. Dog Damus from the train station. And to your surprise, it seems that the auctioneer is none other than Dog Damus. You wonder how he managed to achieve this position here. Can I talk to him? Well, well, fancy seeing you here. Thanks. What brings you to my humble little land auction? I'm trying to see Mr. Merrick, but it's proving a bit more difficult than I'd anticipated. Don't say old Doc didn't warn you, son. Anyway, I'd love to chat, but I'm a bit tied up at the moment. Is there anything I can do to help? Actually, there is. See those two sets of stragglers over there, separate from the crowd? They're all about a hair's breadth away from buying, but I just can't get them to budge. Take your pick. If you can convince either set to buy some houses, I just might put in a good word for you back at the sales office. The fellow by himself there seems like he won't take too much effort to convince. If you want a real challenge, you might try the crowd of five there. I'll see what I can do. boy. Oh, one more thing before you get started. I know you've got experience in this business, but I want to talk to you about seller intuition. From time to time, you might find yourself needing to persuade someone. You know as well as I do that that's all about finding a person's weakness and bending it to your whim. When you're talking to them, you can use seller intuition to your advantage. It'll give you a clearer read on people and let you figure out what you should play to in order to get them to see things your way. But enough yammering from me. Go and do what you have to do. Okay. <laughs> Any bids for 200? 200. 200. So, a smaller crowd of five over here. Oh, there seems to be a smaller crowd of people separate from the main group. They look particularly undecided. And this long man... 100! Do I hear 100? Indecisive man. Hmm, he stands apart from the crowd and looks somewhat indecisive. So, which one should we choose? I take it that this one is easier. So, you've made your husband a very happy man, miss. Okay, why don't we start with that? And then we will come back to that party so, of five. you've made your husband a very happy man, miss. Pardon me, sir. I wonder if I could have a moment of your time. What can I do for you, Mac? The name's Alfred Banks, and I think I'm the one that can do something for you. I hear you're in the market to buy a lot. 
It's true. I've heard plenty about this Coral Gables development, but I've got some reservations. Let's have a chat then. I'm sure I can assuage all your concerns. Okay. I have to admit, I'm not exactly the researching type. Fact is, I'm just going by what I've been told. I've noticed that they're not just selling houses, but also lots. What good is a patch of dirt to me anyway? Uh, so you are attempting to persuade this person. Pick a dialogue choice based on what you think will make them lean towards your argument. Pay special attention to their face, as it is often an indicator of your progress. If you need a hint, click the seller intuition button to perform a personality analysis. If you fail at the persuasion, there are always other ways to convince them. So, appeal. You can build whatever you want, have your dream home, DIY of course. What is DIY? Defend. This lot is in a prime location. Location is key. Less effort to get places. Get to places. Explain. It is long term investment. Payoff will come later as land value increases. Well, he did mention that he is not into research, so. Yeah. Let's cross this out. I don't think he's into numbers, no. <laughs> uh, less effort to get to places. Or dream home. Okay, let's do this one. Defend. This isn't just a patch of dirt, as you call it. It's in a prime location. Well, I always Ooh. hear it said that real estate is all about location. But speaking of, what is it that makes this location so wonderful? And he is smiling now! <laughs> so luxurious. A desirable area means rich neighbors, which means nice parties. I don't think he is into parties, no. Comfortable. Everything is close by. You'll be comfortable and not have to lift a finger. Ooh! That is very appealing. <laughs> Practical, you pay low taxes. Everyone loves low taxes, don't they? No, 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 no. Let's do comfortable. From what I've seen, you'll have everything at your doorstep. You won't need to travel very far to get what you need. Well, <laughs> that's definitely an advantage. Look at that face. If there's one thing I despised about my home up north, it was having to walk everywhere in the cold. One thing I don't understand, though, why is the land being sold at an auction? It seems a bit shady, to be honest. Um, deals. Auctions mean you can pay whatever you want. You get a great deal. Uh, excitement. More exciting than filling up paperwork in an office. Hmm, that could be it. Yes. To make things easy for you. It is not fair to make you do the work. <laughs> uh, is either excitement or yes? Which one should I choose? Um, let's do... Not lifting a finger. Yeah, this one. <laughs> it's for the consideration of the pot. To make things easier, we're trying to make these sales as stress-free and simple as possible. And I certainly do appreciate that, don't get me wrong. Now be honest with me. All this seems a bit too good to be true. There has to be something that isn't right about all this. A uh, lie. Everything is absolutely perfect. Truth, there will be growing pains. But everything will be balanced out in the end. Joke. The place is terrible. Who would want to live here? Haha, <laughs> only kidding. Um, I don't want to lie. No, let's tell him the truth. Like any large undertaking, there's going to be growing pains. There's going to be construction, and not everything will be available right away, but you'll see. This place will be thriving in no time. I appreciate your honesty. There ought to be more salesmen like you. So what do you say? Do we have a deal? We sure do. Where do I sign? Yes, I did it, yes. A pleasure doing business with you, sir. I hope you'll enjoy your new home. Nice work. There's nothing more rewarding than a satisfied customer. Yes. Alright, now let's head to the group of five. <laughs>